find hiding under the pot? The it's Dacartis scolopendra. Mm. This one bite you, nasty too. It's like it's asleep. Mm. You got to put the new home. Whoa. You have to throw it far from here, Tess. From there? Yeah, because it's danger. Is it a cop? Yeah, it's danger to the dogs and danger to you guys. That will bite you. So it's definitely true what they say, kids grow up so fast. Otis is getting so big now, every time I look at him he just gets bigger. The things are so, so slow here on the farm that you you see things grow, you see plants grow, you see the animals grow, you see the kids grow, you see yourself get older. Um, that's how slow it is here. It's daily, daily progression. Like I know every plant on this, this farm and obviously every animal and everything's growing, life is growing every day. It's all just passing you by before your eyes. But I know one thing, there's nothing else I'd rather be doing than be here on the farm with him. Um, and especially with his homeschooling at this age, that we get to spend all this time together. And his education is really coming along. He's got two languages and his maths is great. But yeah, he's growing fast. And then we got another one on the way, Hugo. And uh, that's another adventure, another being that we're bringing into our tribe and uh, to teach and to come along with us for this journey that we're on. It's, uh, it's a blessing. And now I'm gonna clean all the uh, chicken crap out and put some dry rice on the bottom just so their feet aren't wet and uh, they don't get any disease. Uh, obviously it's not been cleaned for a while this because we've been away. So we're gonna clean it all out and put in some dry rice husk and that's gonna be nice and soft on their feet. Our ladies here. They're very okay with being handled too. They're not they're not scared. So they're happy to be handled. They've come very accustomed to us, like family. So a big bag of rice husks, like this, is only one baht, one baht, so you can afford to keep going through it. Sometimes these rice husks are used to supplement the pig food, can't use too much. You can supplement animal food uh, for this. Um, in this case I'm just using it as a floor, as a, a dry soft floor for the chickens and some bedding, just more comfortable for them. Uh, I just cleaned out all the excess straw where snakes can hide and burrow in and potentially bite the chickens. Clear all that out and now put these rice husks down. It's a nice fresh space for them. sometimes receive feedback of why do you wear a jumper or a hat it's Thailand you know like but I think what some people don't understand about Thailand is just because it's time doesn't mean it's hot everywhere all the time actually today is quite cool and uh, it's jumper wearing weather even hat wearing weather uh, that's why we like this area where we live as well in Buridan there are some areas of Thailand which are constantly hot but this about one third of the year you're getting cool temperatures even cold mornings uh, it's nice to be under the duvet, you know, cuddled up in the bamboo hut uh, on a very cold morning. Uh, waking up to the sounds of the roosters and the chickens and waking up slow, you know. So it's one of the reasons we like this, this area. It's cooler and uh, I wear a jumper sometimes, why not? And then here they lay six eggs a day now and 
just on dry straw. They get in there quite comfy. Put a little curtain, give them some privacy. And uh, we also still have our red light on at night time. Apparently it makes them feel comfortable. It's solar powered, so it doesn't cost anything. So it looks like this egg has been kicked out. Kicked out of the nest, must be a bad egg. So we'll get rid of that one. And let's hope no more get kicked out. We want our ducklings. It's a really dirty one, isn't it? So what were you saying? When Daddy gets old, what? When, when Daddy gets old and Daddy already dies, and what do you want to do is take care of Hugo. So when I get old and I already die, you'll take care of Hugo? Yeah. Okay, then. And, and Mommy too, you know. Yeah, because Mommy will get old, won't she? Yeah, but him will be still cooking. And when you, you die a long day, you know. Hugo is your brother, isn't it? You're going to take care of your little brother, because you're the big brother, aren't you? Yeah. But he'll take care of you too one day. Really? Yeah, brothers have got to stick together, because this world is hard sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, when mom and daddy die, but when I know to keep big one like daddy, and I can help Hugo, when Hugo cannot, when Hugo cannot, when Hugo cannot get out the bamboo and the what, what, after daddy bamboo, but you know, I'll pick him out, you know. Right, okay, well that's good. You can look after Hugo. Actually, many of our favourite plants have overgrown their pots now, which is great. And my job is going to be separating them. Separating them and proliferating them. Some of our favourites here. Dragon, silver dragon skin plant. Look at this one, beautiful. It's forest plants. Separate, yeah, and this one. Separate this one. Yeah. How are you feeling, babe? Tired. Tired. Try, get Mark. Many babies in there, look at those two. Oh, we're gonna separate those today, aren't we? Then we'll have lots of them. It's got so many babies, hasn't it? They're going to need their own pots, aren't they? Yeah. Right then. So if you're going to try and go self-sustaining in rural Thailand, and you know you really do want to live off the land, of course you're going to have limited income, and there are some hard facts of life to, to face. And I've been quite naive when we first started this journey a couple of years ago. You know, I thought, oh, we'll have the animals, we won't need to kill the animals, you know, it's, we'll just keep taking care of them and all of that. And, and of course that would be nice, but the reality of the situation is that each of these animals costs money and um, you're feeding them, you know, and it costs every month, it's costing money to feed them, to take care of them and whatnot. And so we have to be sensible and realistic. Um, and misery uh, is because of our members and our patrons, we, uh, we can keep misery. It, but if we didn't have members and patrons that paid for the food, we would not do that. We, we would have to send misery to slaughter because to feed her every month is, is expensive. And so, but we, we vowed from the beginning to, for Misery to have a nice life and we're building a, a nice enclosure and whatnot. But the facts of life are, on a farm, if you're gonna have livestock and animals, they cost money to feed and you have to find some kind of profit for them, which is usually in the, in the meat or eating it yourself, you know. The other pigs, the Misery's brothers and sisters, they all go to, go, go to slaughter. Her mum sells them. Uh, she grows them up big and then she sells them and they're just the facts of life of, of farming. Uh, and I'm guilty of being quite naive of it in the beginning. Uh, but now the more we kind of look to go self-sustainable, it's not self-sustainable to feed many, many animals and not um, eat them or have them eaten. I think the best thing that we can do as a balance to this, misery is a different story. She is going to have a, a, a happy life till she's old. We're building her a new enclosure. She's going to be free and, and whatnot. But uh, with everything else, uh, we allow them to have as best life as they possibly can. The chickens and whatnot. They, you can see them, they run around the garden here. They're very, very free range. When they're tired, they go into their enclosure themselves. 
to have a, a ha happy, healthy life, but we do eat their eggs. And I have to present the reality of being self-sustainable. If you're meat eaters, you know, if you're vegans, it's a little bit different. Um, I would say that there may be some other different associated costs. Are you producing as many vegetables as you possibly can? But um, that's it. And I want to give a true reflection of what we're doing here. I don't want to sugarcoat anything because I know there's other people that want to follow and do very similar things. And so you can learn from my mistakes. Um, you know, maybe you don't even have to. Maybe you already know this. But um, just thought I'd give some reality to the situation of farming in rural Thailand. So over the years, me and this buffalo have come to really know each other. She's had many babies and been pregnant many times since, um, since we've kind of lived amongst each other together. Um, some people often complain about the ropes that are, are in her nose there. And I'd ask you to understand that, number one, this buffalo is not mine. It's uh, Damo's families, and they're not a wealthy family. They're not an overly poor family, but they're not a wealthy family. And sometimes I'm documenting what's happening in Thailand. I'm not trying to change it. I'm documenting it, you know, what's really going on here. It's not my place to try to change it. And this is how they've reared buffaloes for, for generations this way. This buffalo is very lucky. It gets to uh, graze and eat in different areas um, it has a very varied diet. It'll never be killed to be eaten. Uh, its babies uh, survive and one of them is just over here, gets to live with its babies. Um, you must understand that I'm only documenting things here in Thailand. It's not my place to come in as a farang and say, oh, you know, we need to change this and we change that. Um, from what I can see, the buffalo is very happy and has been for many years. It gets to go out in the rice fields and live a very free range life. So I'm just checking, I thought that was a snake, just jumped into me there. It has a very free range life. Um, okay, there are some things that I know people don't agree with, but I think focus your energies more, the people that disagree with it, focus your energies more in what's happening near you locally. Uh, the slaughter of cows, the, that kind of thing. If, if that's your thing, if that's your, um, your big gripe, focus on you know, what's going on in the mass production of animals. These animals get to have have free range over vast areas of rice field and so they get to they get to roam and they get to be free so really uh, better to focus on the good than, than the bad. She really is a beautiful animal. <laughs> Chicken, garlic, chili. My favourite. This is my kratom plant, but when I left, it was a big bush when I left a few months ago. And now it's just, uh, it, damn, I had to plant it in the ground. But um, I think this looks like caterpillar or some insects been eating it. 
So I'm going to dig it up again and repot it and put it somewhere where I can keep an eye on it, keep the insects off it. I dare say though, it looks like someone's been picking the leaves off. You see, that could only be human. So I think someone's been eating the kratom. Many of the Thai builders and uh, Thai farmers around here will chew kratom and give you a bit of a buzz. Uh, but also it's for pain relief. I use it instead of paracetamol. Let me tell you a funny story of living in rural Thailand. Every now and again you'll hear three shots in the air. Boom, boom, boom. It sounds like a shotgun being shot into the air, but actually it's a firework. And what it means is somebody in the village has died. And uh, bear in mind we hear this probably like once a week or something around here. And every time we hear it, people are like, mm. like they cringe. And that's because every time somebody dies, everybody in the village pays 500 baht to the deceased family. And so because it's quite a big village, the deceased family is going to get like 70, 80,000, maybe more, 100,000. But when lots of people die in one month, it's expensive for the local families here to keep paying this 500 baht, it's about 10 pounds. However, it does keep them happy because obviously when they die, their family gets something. Or if one of their family members die, they get something. So it's a little bit like uh, life insurance but a local life insurance. So I don't have to pay, pay into it. And we're not sure yet as a, the only farang in the village that's in the yellow book, if I die, uh, do people have to pay? Probably not. Um, but I thought it's an interesting quirky thing from the village and the, the local way of doing things. Um, yeah, bang, bang, bang in the sky and you gotta pay some money. Something you'll get quite used to working in rural Thailand and doing this sort of thing is every little tickle on your arm or your foot or your leg you're constantly looking down to see what it is because it could be a hornet it could be a dakarp the centipede could be a snake every little tickle you're like oh what's that I can't tell you the number of times I've been um, stung by a hornet here uh, they just come down they attack and land on you they stick it straight in they don't care and they don't wait um, and there are many, many hornets around here, especially this time of year. So also in the bamboo, even though I'm in the mosquito net, at night time, if you were to feel something land on you, you're always like, oh, what's that? Just, uh, you become very sensitive to the body, bodily sensations. Even now this leaf tickling my leg here, you're like double checking what it is. That's rural Thailand for you. When we first started this journey a long time ago, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And I was using terrible soil, like no nutrients in the soil. Um, I was purchasing soil when we had perfectly good soil on the farm. You make a lot of mistakes in the beginning, but now like I found with our composting and then mixing uh, the soil with the buffalo poo and then leaving it for a couple seasons, you get this beautiful rich, nutrient rich compost, which is just perfect for planting. And I wouldn't use anything else now. You know, we, we throw our food on it. We throw um, anything we don't give to the animals that is. Um, but really it's the buffalo poo that makes it nutritious. Uh, not too much because it becomes acidic, not good for seedlings and, and whatnot. But, um, but otherwise, a nice mix of this um, with, with soil is, is just perfect. Now, I am planting the uh, Heavenly Blue Morning Glory, the LSA containing uh, psychedelic plant. Last time I, last time it bloomed, I took the seeds off it. I harvested thousands of seeds and I've been keeping them for this season. So all the plants have died now and now I can replant using the seeds from last year. So it really is the circle of life. And when I grow these ones out too, I will harvest the seeds 
And so every year you have Heavenly Blue Morning Glory uh, growing on site. Um, it can also be made into a, a tea, though I don't recommend it to, to people. You can make it into a into a, a brew. It's quite heavy on the body though. Uh, it's quite heavy. It causes vasoconstriction in the veins. So it, you feel quite tight and the body feels quite heavy. So certainly wouldn't recommend in, ingesting it. Um, but it's a beautiful plant. It's got an interesting story and I like it around the farm. Charlie's sick, so I had to shave all his hair off and put this little top on him. Didn't I, Charlie? Hmm? Get you well. This is for you, Charlie. He was getting a bit cold, weren't you, and shaking? <laughs>